We're going to stay on the markets and bring in our next guest, Kathy Entwistle, Morgan Stanley Managing Director. Thank you so much for being here, Kathy, spending the eve of Christmas Eve with us. I just have to get your take on all of the eco data dump that we got PCE coming at 5.7%, fastest pace in nearly four decades. Consumer sentiment inched higher to 70.6. Initial jobless claims stagnant at 205,000 and S&P hitting a new intraday high. What do you make of it all? What should the Fed make of it all? And then how does it influence your forecasting going forward for 2022? Thanks for having me. And those are all great questions. There's a lot to think about there. And as you can see, everything changes moment by moment, day by day. One day the market's down tremendously and we're looking at a lot of negativity coming up. In the next few days, we have like great rallies like we've had. It all has to do, in, in my opinion, about our expectations of what's going on in the markets and how the Fed might react to it. So we're, we're trying to take advantage of the dislocations when they happen. For example, the last week or two, I've been working pretty hard with my clients' accounts to find losses that I can harvest in their accounts to wash away any gains. It's been a great year in the market. A lot of clients have gains. If they've realized gains, <clears throat> they want to minimize tax impact. So it's something we think about. We also think about utilizing some of those gains in January as well. So it's being thoughtful and being nimble and trying to take all the information in and, and just make some pretty basic foundational assumptions about what's going on. Um, basically, I'm telling clients that we still think that there's a lot of issues in the markets in terms of valuations. Maybe we've gotten ahead of our skis a little bit in some of the areas. A lot of companies have done really great. Not everybody has. And we want to look at the ones that have the potential to do well that might not have performed yet and focus there. And Kathy, I want to get your take on what you think the Fed is going to do next year, because I've been asking a lot of our guests this, and uh, it's quite a wide range of answers. We had a Mizuho guest on yesterday who said zero. He doesn't think that there are going to be any interest rates uh, hiked uh, next year, and that's because he believes the economy is going to roll over in quarter one or quarter two. Other guests believe that it's going to be two or three in line with market uh, participants, what they're pricing in the bond market. So what's your view? Okay, great question. So my view has to do with the Fed holding up the markets for the last year and a half, right? All of the things that they put into effect back in March, April, May of 2020 has really been what's, what's helped drive the market to where we are. And as they realize that inflation is no longer transitory, it took you know a few months for them to come to that and share that idea with us. But as they started to look at that, they realized they have to start easing up a little bit and not holding up the market as much as they have been. And I think that's where we saw some of the jitters in the last week or so, people trying to figure out, it's not just Omicron, it's sort of like, hey, what's happening with the Fed? What does this mean for the markets and, and valuations and inflation? So in that respect, it's more about how they're going to react. And I do think that they will raise rates a couple of times next year. I think they have to. And they need to do it slowly so that there's not these like big movements. And reacting to market movements is not the way to make, you know, Fed policy. You need to think about what's going to work for the long term and then do it slowly so there are no shocks coming through the markets. That would be my, my thought process. And uh, Kelly, the Fed is walking a very fine line right now, as you say, you know, sort of three to four rate hikes are the consensus. You say less than that. We're starting to hear whispers about the R word recession being an outlier possibility. I wonder what is your view on that? And if you just play along with me, what catalyst could send things spiraling downwards? Higher oil? Could it be slowing China growth? What are the factors? Yeah, I think that the retail, the individual investor has really been the one holding up the markets um, with buying in on dips. So they've gotten that message loud and clear. Um, however, you also have to think about what you're buying and if you're overpaying for something. So I think that some of the things that can come into play, yes, uh, with recession fears would be um, more, you know, more people not returning to work, Companies, smaller companies, smaller businesses are shutting down because they can't get enough employees. Um, I think that those are some of the like issues that are more local to people that we'll see. But also overall with the Fed not moving fast enough can be an issue. They're going to have to raise rates in order to keep 
the economy at like sort of a level base. And also I would say, yeah, there's always different things happening in the world. Uh, and there's oil price issues, there's um, you know China issues as well. But I think basically it's gonna be more about can the Fed do their job well? And if they can, they can keep us out of that recession. And if they do things too fast or they make decisions too slow, I think that's also the challenge. So to me, it's we're, we are our own risk right now. Yeah, and I'm going to be crossing my fingers that the Fed gets it just perfect. But I want to ask you about investments coming into the new year on the Wi-Fi Interactive. I have dialed up a month-to-date view of the leading sectors. And uh, we can see healthcare, staples, utility, real estate rounding up the top. And that's a very def defensive posture. Consumer discretionary really taking uh, the only one taking a little bit of a dip here. That's XLY down here. And um, over the last three, three days, though, we are seeing kind of a reversal of that. It's really about risk on. So coming into the new year, what are you recommending uh, to your clients? Yeah, I'm actually recommending the opposite of what your chart is showing right now. I think <laughs> that you have to take a little bit of the risk off. And I think that you'd be wise to do that now. Um, the areas that have done quite well this year shouldn't technically do well going forward. So take some of the profits. Um, if you can't afford to take profits this year, start taking them in January and move into some of the more defensive areas. I mean, the, the ones that you've said that have done well, healthcare, real estate, financials, these have all done quite well. And we think they'll continue to do well. We want to find very like dividend paying, longer term um, companies that are undervalued. That's, you know, that's really where the sweet spot is right now. And also the areas of the market that have gotten hit this year that nobody's really paying attention to are the areas that we want to refocus on and find opportunities there. It definitely looks like it is going to be a more challenging environment with more volatility for investors and for the consumer next year. We'll have to leave it there. Still to be seen if Santa visits Wall Street, but I hope Santa is very good to you. Kathy Entwistle from Morgan Stanley, the managing director there. Thank you and happy holidays.